Testing, 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 testing. Let me see here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the test of the live stream. I'll be doing my first live tomorrow, but I wanted to test and see how this works. Go ahead and see how the positioning is. Hey, so if I put this over here, and if I duplicate that, shout out to Black Curtis, shout out to Black Curtis. Can you hear me fine? This is a test of the audio, test of the audio and the video, ladies and gentlemen. So put a one, please, if you can hear me. And if I'm coming through, fine. I'm good. I'm good, they say, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, if you guys are subscribers, you may have seen the live stream notice that I did for tomorrow. And I'll be doing that tomorrow at noon. So be sure, be sure to come back. Be sure to come back for that. But right now, I just want to test to see how this works. Okay, this is a test for me and a test for you guys as well, right? To see how comfortable we get conversating, conversing. I never quite know if it's conversating or conversing, right? I don't know which is real. <laughs> is it conversating? Is that a real word? Anyways, so trying to see how this works with me getting my ideas and my thoughts across while responding to the live chat and also making sure that the audio is legit, so on and so forth. The webcam is nice. Still setting up the background, right, on the studio and whatnot. But as they say, building the plane while I'm flying, flying it, right? Not uh, conversating isn't a real word. Good, good. So what is the word? Is conversing a real word? Or you just don't, don't even go there, just say talking. Uh, interlocuting with your interlocutors. <laughs> Do we have to go that big? Or is there a word for that? Uh, chatting, uh, dialogue, interlocution, okay? Again, this is a test of the live stream. And tomorrow I'm gonna to be talking, and let, perhaps I may introduce the topic that I'm going to be doing in the next video, which will be live at noon Pacific time. Not live at noon Pacific time, which will be 3 p.m. for you guys in the East Coast. Okay, 3 p.m. in the East Coast and live noon Pacific time. So what am I gonna be talking about? I'm gonna be int introducing what I call, I'm introducing my pyramid scheme. <laughs> So it's a systems check, right? That I'm calling the pyramid systems check, basically, right? And this is basically a way of checking your systems. And over here, interlocuting, <laughs> high value version of conversating, exactly. What's up, Nicer? What's up, Nicer? We are doing the test. We're preparing for tomorrow's live stream. Tomorrow's live stream is gonna be hot. We're gonna go in. I'm gonna share some ideas. I'm gonna hopefully learn a lot from you guys. And hopefully you guys can pick apart the ideas that I'll be sharing regarding your energy, okay? It's about energy and efficiency. And perhaps I'm gonna go ahead and say one thing today. And I put that in the title. In the title I said, life test. And I talk about task switching. Now, task switching lies somewhere in the pyramid. Okay, I'm going to be introducing the pyramid tomorrow. But task switching lies somewhere in the pyramid. It's not at the bottom of the pyramid, so it's not the most important thing. But it is somewhere higher up here, and it's not at the very top either, but there is a place for task switching. Now, what do I mean by task switching? Task switching is what you have to do when you hit a wall. So let's say you're working on a spreadsheet, okay? You're working on a spreadsheet. Well, thank you, Nicer. You're doing something that is, let's say it's clerical. You're, you're doing something that is not particularly creative and it's not in the research slash learning aspect. It's maybe it's a little robotic and automatic, right? And you're doing this kind of task and then you hit a wall. You think, 
God, I need to stop. I can't move. My brain isn't working right. I think I need to get up. I think I need a nap. I think I need a snack. Whatever it might be, okay? What you should do at that point, or one thing to do, okay, is you need to switch tasks. Now, a lot of you already know that this works, okay? If, if you are familiar with this idea or this concept, if you can give me a one on the chat regarding when you hit a particular roadblock and you think what you need is a nap, actually what you need is to switch categories of tasks. So what do I mean by this? Leave the spreadsheet alone, leave the clerical task alone, and move into perhaps a more creative task. Go to a task that involves maybe research, learning, or creativity, okay? Maybe you need to start making cold calls to your clients or something like that. Maybe you need to drum up some new business and you'll find, boom, that now you have a new surge of energy. It might even be switching a task to a household task, like go do your laundry, go do the dishes, okay? Go mop the floor and you'll find that you have a whole lot of energy for floor mopping, but you have no energy for the spreadsheet anymore, okay? So there are different silos, okay? Different silos. Let's say you have the clerical silo, and then you have the creative silo, you have the research slash learning silo, and when your battery runs low, okay, don't think that, oh, I need a nap or I need to, I'm not gonna be able to work today. No, just switch, move in your calendar, okay? And that's why it's important every day to have tasks in your calendar that are of different categories. If you just have clerical tasks all day, it's gonna, you're gonna have a rough day. So you wanna have the clerical tasks like spreadsheets and so on and so forth. And then maybe you wanna have some creative tasks and then some research tasks. Maybe you need to research on how to get government contracts, right? You need to call the small business uh, administration or something like that. So you have these different kinds of tasks. When you hit a wall on the clerical task, which is what we're using as an example here, we're starting out with the clerical task, just take the small business administration call move it up in the calendar and move the clerical task below and pick up the phone. All of a sudden you're going to be excited. You're going to have energy again. You'll be like, wow, I didn't need a nap. I just needed to switch tasks, right? I've seen ones in the chats. Okay. People seem to be <laughs> the dishes, the dishes, the dishes. Okay. I can the chat salute, salute to you too, sir. Doug. So, Doug, good evening, everybody. This is a test of the live stream in preparation for tomorrow's live stream where we're going to be talking about the pyramid method of systems check. Okay. We're going to be talking about the systems check pyramid method. And I just wanted to talk today a little bit, you know, as a way of both testing the audio, testing the video, testing my ability to read and talk at the same time. I wanted to just talk about one aspect of the pyramid, which I'll be introducing tomorrow, which is task switching. Okay. When you run into a wall, when your efficiency runs low, when the battery runs low, okay, don't think, oh my God, I can't work anymore. Just switch tasks to the different kind of category. Go from clerical, in this case that we've been using, to something creative or something that involves research or learning, or maybe you need to also switch positions. Aha. OK, here's another thing. It's not just about the tasks. It is about the position and the medium with which you're working. OK, I'll get into that in a second. But shout out to Nelson. Nelson. Nelson Amadeus. OK, Nelson Amadeus. Let me see if I can find out how to share the uh, live chat, put the live chats on the, you know, I'm going to have to. Uh, do quite a bit of learning here on the fly. And uh, hopefully you guys can bear with me. Okay. See so where it says send feedback. We might need to hit up Solo, Solo TV 84 later tonight so he can give me some tutorials on how this works. But I was talking about task switching, right? Switch from one task to the other. And these have to be in different categories. You can't switch from one spreadsheet to another spreadsheet because you've hit a spreadsheet wall. What you need is maybe the phone call tasks. Start making the phone call task or do the research kind of tasks. Or maybe you need to go do housework kinds of kind of tasks. It happens all the time. You think you'd run out of energy, but all of a sudden you got mad energy for the laundry. 
Okay, you got mad energy for sweeping and, and mopping and polishing stuff, but you can't do no more spreadsheets, okay? So in addition to the task, there's the position, okay? So I have a, what you see right here, if you can see it, is a standing desk, okay? I got a standing desk over there and, okay? And I have behind me also, and that's what we'll talk about medium, behind me here is, you know, my paper, what I call my paper desk. Over here, there's no computer, okay? I just got paper and a variety of colorful pens and pencils, okay, that I can have fun with. I'm also gonna be setting up that blackboard, the glass blackboard. I just have to hang it up. I need help, can't do, it's not a one man job, okay? So I need to get someone in here that'll come in in the Rona time to help me with it. Okay, so what am I talking about here? We talk about switching tasks, but we also now we're gonna talk about switching medium and switching positions. Why did I mention the paper desk and the standing desk? I'm mentioning that because maybe you're tired of sitting down, okay? This is the position one, it's fairly simple, okay? There's a different kind of thinking that goes on. There's something called like kinetic thinking and some people are more that, think better that way than, uh, than uh, others. Why do people pace when they think? Some people anyways, and some people pace more than others, right? Let me go ahead and read this. All right. I wrote that one effective way is dedicating 90 minutes uninterrupted to a task. But that may be too advanced for someone just starting out. <laughs> okay. That'll make video title Streaming Learning the Ropes with Solo TV84. Indeed. What's up, I Props to you, bro. Shout out to Chris. Chris Trips. Chris Trips be tripping. Word them up, word them up, word them up. Black Curtis, shout out to you and shout out to Nicer. Okay. Now, in addition to switching tasks, you also want to switch positions. So I often will leave this computer desk. The computer desk is what's in front of me. I got my ar array of screens and all that madness, right? Laptop, two desktops, all that crap. I got it on this table here. And I will get up and I will go to that table, which is my standing desk. And over there, I stand up and I can pace back and forth in the room. I find that I can do more kind of creative tasks that way in the standing up position. I can walk around. I even walk out of the room. Maybe I walk and I go check the mail while I'm thinking about the particular solution that I need to come up with. Okay. So switch positions. Get off the chair. Don't think you need to go take a nap. What you need to do is perhaps switch positions. Okay. Right. And also, I use the blackboard. Well, I have a, a whiteboard and an easel over there, but I also have a blackboard, which I'll be setting up, which you see behind me. And I use that as a way of switching mediums and also switching positions. So I talk about standing up, but I, let's talk about the medium part. So you hit a wall with a spreadsheet. So it might be the case that you're done with clerical tasks, but it also might be the case that you're done with screams, okay? Maybe it's the screen battery is done, okay? Your ability to work looking at a screen in this position, looking at that spreadsheet is done. But guess what? You might be able to print out the spreadsheet, turn around to your, uh, turn around to your, your desk over there, your paper desk, and go ahead and do some writing. All right, and use paper rather than a screen. Yep, pacing or walking helps me to think. Salute to the chat and Ike. All right. So for this test today, I got I got my um, I got my jacket on just for the test. My jacket with my casual shirt and uh, I got some basketball shorts. Actually, I got some basketball shorts. Uh, not <laughs> this is not the real live yet. Okay. So tomorrow for the real live, I'll, I'll get the socks out and the shoes out and everything. But this is just a test, ladies and gentlemen. So I got my casual basketball shorts on with uh, with the jacket. Word them up, word them up, word them up, word them up. So switch positions, 
you need to get up, go to the standing desk, use a whiteboard. The, the, the simple fact that you're writing things on a larger font rather than looking at it on a screen or writing it on a small piece of paper also changes your ability to be efficient, okay? Again, there are different silos. We talked about tasks. Tasks we can put in different categories. Creative tasks, clerical tasks, research slash learning tasks, right? And you want to fill your calendar with these different kinds of tasks so that when you hit the wall on one of them, you can switch to the other and then you'll get a boost while the other battery recharges and then you come back again. So this assumes already that you, you know, you're trying to be efficient and trying to be effective, okay? You know, that's, that's what my channel is all about. This is not me convincing you that you should be efficient and effective. Okay, presumably that's a given. It's a given that you need to be putting in those 12 hours to 16 hour days. That's a given. I'm not here to convince anybody of that. However, you got that time. Now, how are you efficient? And I talked about just to, for those coming in live or coming in new to the stream. Let me see over here. Oh, we got, we got 10 people in this test stream today. We got 10 people over here. The unspecialist, okay, the unspecialist. And I read your chat before. And what we got here, switching through sorts of shift and harder music normally picks me back up too. Gotcha, gotcha. Different kinds of music. That's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting one. And by the way, I also have a, a music and motivation is somewhere in the pyramid. So what I was going to do is I'm going to say again, for those who are just coming in, that this is a test for the live stream for tomorrow. The live stream for tomorrow is about energy regulation, okay? And I have a systems check, which I use in a pyramid for, okay? And I say that let's talk about task switching and medium switching, is it switching today, which so lies somewhere in the pyramid, okay? The base of the pyramid is not that. The base of the pyramid is the most important thing that we'll go through it. Perhaps if you look at the thumbnail for tomorrow's live stream, which you guys should definitely try to make, noon, PST, noon, PST, okay? That's Pacific time, noon Pacific time. And for those of you in the East Coast, that's 3 p.m. You can interpolate for the rest of you guys, right? Somewhere in between noon and 3 p.m. If you're not in the West Coast or in the East, East Coast. So the pyramid systems check for energy regulation. Somewhere in there is task switching. OK, we talked about different kinds of tasks, but also there is the medium switching. You're done with computer screens. No more computer screens. You turn around and you start doing the work on paper or you get up or you do it on the blackboard or the whiteboard or you get up and you go to your standing desk. Or you know what? Sometimes I just say F it and I just go to my piano, my keyboard over there. OK, and I just start. Uh, I start playing a song. Right. Uh, because. That is part of my creative task schedule anyways, okay? I have songs I need to write. I have live gigs I need to do, okay? This is, that's part of my passion. That's part of what keeps me alive and going, okay? So sometimes I get to the point where it's just like, maybe I just need to go to the piano, all right? So switching the medium, switching from pen, okay? to Blackboard, switching from pen to computer screen, switching positions and also switching scenery, okay? Switching scenery. So what we got here, okay? And my thought <laughs> Switching up music. Switching up music. Yes. Can't wait for tomorrow's stream. Qbert. Hubert Raim or Hubert Raim. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And tomorrow we're going to be going through the pyramid. And perhaps I should just go ahead and give a brief introduction because, again, this pyramid thing has many things in it. But these are things that I do not expect to be exhaustive in terms of my description, explanation, or interlocuting about it tomorrow. Right? So... In my past videos, for example, I've talked about 
listening to the sound of your ear or watching what your hands are doing, right? And this has to do with those of you who are paying attention. These are all kind of meditation techniques. So I've not explicitly talked about meditation. And can I explicitly talk about meditation in one stream? No. But my point, the point of this channel is to break things down to actionable steps. So I'm going to tell you something to pay attention to, something to do, right? And then over time, we can begin to see, oh, this is about this or this is about that. So the pyramid that I'm talking about has many things in it that we can touch on, right? But then there's not enough time in the world to exhaust it, okay? So as we go through, there'll be different videos touching upon different things in the pyramid. And I may not call it the pyramid, okay? Because the, the listening and the hand stuff, it's in there, but I'm, I'm not, I didn't mention anything about the pyramid. But this is a schematic by which we can begin to think about this thing vis-a-vis -vis the task of regulating your energy, being efficient, a systems check, okay? So when you have an engine system, let's say, planes, trains, automobiles, right? Songwriter, but I got some questions. I'll hit you up later if that's cool. All right, nicer. Yeah, I'm, I'm down to answer questions. I am not professionally trained in music, but I am a songwriter. Uh, that's more of a natural talent thing. And then me exercising that muscle and getting better and better at it. And uh, luckily, I'm able to work with professional mu musicians that are all experts in their craft. They are expert keyboard players and expert guitar and bassists and drummers and so on and so forth. And what I bring in is the performance, the songwriting, the charisma, the, the magic, right? So, and luckily <laughs> for me, that's the easiest part because you know you don't <laughs> you don't have to sit down and practice your scales over and over again. You just have to. Uh, you just, it's, it's it's all a mental and spiritual game, if you will, right? So. The pyramid is about energy regulation. It's about efficiency checking. And we said, or I was saying, that when you have a system such as planes, trains, automobiles, we're all used to these things. There are systems with engines, they need to move, okay? We have ways of checking these systems, okay? For efficiency. Let's say we have the heating and the cooling system, okay? We don't want it to overheat because that represents energy loss. Heat is energy loss, okay? That is the number one way in which we lose mechanical energy, light energy, or any kind of energy gets lost into the universe via heat. The more you can do something without generating heat, the more efficient you are. That's why you have lubrication in your engine. So you check your heating and your cooling systems, and then you check your oil and your oil filter system so that you're, you're using the parts that are moving more efficiently and not losing it to friction and heat. Okay, and then you check wind resistance, making sure you're moving at an optimal speed relative to wind resistance so that you're getting more bang out of your buck. Fuel efficiency, right? Well, how about me? How about you? How about your human system? Well, we're physical things just like every any other thing, right? Okay, you got a body. Where is the dashboard? What are the different gauges on the dashboard? How do you check them? That's what this pyramid is about. The pyramid is because the bottom is the most important. It's an easy scheme to remember. So you start from the bottom and then you check, 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 check. At the top, let's say we continue with our engine analogy. At the top is where you add the rocket boost. So if your engine is sluggish, you don't just say, oh, you know, bust in the rocket boost or the super NAS engine propellant, whatever. No, you don't start there. You say, well, let's make sure that our heating system is cool and our cooling system is cool, pun intended, and then go to the fuel efficiency aspect and make sure that our oil filter and our fuel filter are good. All these things, so you're building up from the base of the pyramid to the top. If all systems, systems are check, and then you say you need something extra, boom, let's add some rocket fuel. And the top of my pyramid, similarly, is that rocket fuel thing, okay? And the music, music, coffee, 
other kinds of inspiration like that are at the top of the pyramid. The things that you use only after you have checked all other systems. Make sense? Make sense? Okay. Give me a one in the chat if the pyramid scheme makes sense, at least in my description so far, which again, I will be going over this again and more in depth and in a more interactive way because I will be better trained given this live test systems, which you guys are participating in and I appreciate it. But let me know if the scheme makes sense to you. Systems check, you got engines, you got a dashboard, you check certain systems. There is a pyramid scheme involved with that. There's some basic things you wanna check before you go and throw in rocket fuel into your engine. You wanna make sure that it's not other things that are wrong, right? So same thing with you, both mentally and physically, you wanna have a scheme by which you make sure you check the basic things before you get to the top where you're throwing in the rocket fuel, okay? And specifically today, I see ones in the chat, thank you very much. Specifically today, we wanted to just talk about the task switching, which is a practical, more of a practical aspect of things, uh, something to do. And I'm not telling you where exactly it is on the position of the pyramid, right? We'll talk about that tomorrow. But we talk about task switching, medium switching, which is basically what is the medium by which you are doing the work? Is it on a paper? Is it on a blackboard, a whiteboard? Are you standing? Are you sitting? Is it on a screen? Okay, that's the medium. And then your position and your environment. I often take my laptop, take it from the upstairs and go to my downstairs office. Okay, and all of a sudden, I have energy again. Who the hell knows why? Right? I'm not a neuroscientist, so I'm not going to say silly things like, you know, there is a... Uh, there was a creative part of your brain and then there's a clerical part of your brain. I don't know, but I'm telling you what's real. I'm telling you things that it's, are intuitive, I'm telling you things that you know and you've seen work. I don't know if there's different parts of the brain different, doing these different tasks, okay? And I don't know why when I move from here to the library or to my downstairs office, all of a sudden I can work again, but I'm just done working in this room, right? So there's the position switching, there is standing versus sitting, there is the medium switching, there is going from computer to, to paper, to a paper to board, there's the pacing rather than being still, okay? And then there is the task switching, going from clerical to research and learning to creative kinds of tasks. And that helps you to, that is, a, that is a one check that you do. You're like, I've hit the wall, is it a time for task switching? So we're just talking about one little thing in the pyramid here, okay? Keep this up, please. You're dropping 24 karat gems. Make sure you pick it up. Make sure you pick it up. I turn on the super chat. Turn on the super chat. YouTube will not let me turn on the super chat until I until when I get a thousand subscriptions. So, <laughs> so Mr. Neil Stewart, share the video. Uh, share it on your Facebook. Share the channel on your various chats, I don't know, WhatsApp, Google Hangouts, so on and so forth. And uh, let's go from 500 to 1,000. Then we can turn on the Super Chats. And it also allows me to also have the community tab where I can kind of share more behind the scenes things and so on and so forth. So YouTube has this kind of stratification whereby they want you to grow and then they'll give you more and more uh, functionality, if you will, right? What up, Big Ike? Well, what up to you? Uh, let me see here. Is that larger? Chris S. Makes sense. But Pyramid Scheme is a risky title. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, so um, I called it my... Did I call it a Pyramid Scheme in the, in the, in the title? I probably did because, you know... Attention, attention, attention is a, is a big uh, is a big thing. You got to get people's attention somehow, some way. Bring them in the room. Ha, ha, ha. We have a big laugh about it. And then we learn, right? And then we learn. Neil Stewart, you offer coaching services? Okay. I, let me answer that question. Not formally, uh, but I do have mentees. So go ahead, 
and send me an email at ike at prometheusengineering.org. Got a silly company name called Prometheus Engineering, and I always got to make sure I'm spelling it right whenever I say it. Okay. So, Mr. Neil Stewart, go ahead and send me an email. I don't formally do coaching, but I have mentees that I can take on in an informal capacity. And uh, we can see how, we can see if I can be of use in any way. I'm glad to do it. Okay. So, are you going to come out with videos on sales techniques? Who else wants to see videos and sales techniques? Um, is that something that will be you will find useful um, on this? Because uh, we, we could start by in terms of recommendations of people that I've learned from, right? And then I can talk about specific techniques, okay? What's good, Ike, you say? Donnie Breeze, Donnie Breeze, Donnie Breeze. That sounds good. Black Curtis. So we're getting some seconding of the sales techniques idea. Okay. And to those just coming in, this is the test of the live stream that we're going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be introducing the pyramid systems check. The pyramid is basically a dashboard for checking the efficiency of your engine. Okay. I'm a very practical guy, so I'm not just talking about principles here. I'm talking about things to do, things to do, and where to start. There's a system. You start from the bottom of the pyramid. Always start from the bottom of the pyramid. Don't start at the top. We gave an analogy. We said we have an, an engine, okay? If something is wrong with the engine, there's certain things you check first before you just go ahead and dump rocket fuel on it, right? You say, hey, how is the heating and the cooling system? How is my fuel efficiency system? How am I moving at an optimum speed relative to wind resistance? You check wind resistance. You check the lubricating systems to make sure that things are properly lubricated so that you're getting most efficiency and not losing a lot to heat, so on and so forth. Okay? So there is a base and then the next level, the next level, next level, next level, next level. So in a very practical way, how do you take this analogy and apply it to yourself so you can put in those 12 to 16-hour work days? seven days a week. So regarding the sales techniques, definitely, and I already kind of dropped one video, which I called being the most comfortable person in the room. Okay. So who asked about the sales techniques? Is it quasi? Quasi? Quasi. If you watch that video, the video where I talked about being the most comfortable person in the room is one of my bicycle videos and the videos that I make while I'm riding my bicycle. Very, very uh, convenient way to shoot videos to keep my mind going while I'm going up and down the hills of San Francisco, right? So sales techniques, I drop one video that has to do with being the most comfortable person in the room, which is very important for making other people comfortable. And when you make other people comfortable, they're primed to be persuaded by you. Okay, it's key. It's all about making people comfortable. Okay, so another video that I can make is about stating your intentions up front so that you can make people comfortable. Because a lot of times people think that if I just come out and state my intentions up front, people will get uncomfortable. But the reverse is the case. Okay, people want to know where they are. People want to know what game they're playing, okay? If this is a room where we're going to be exposed to tigers and lions, tell me first, okay? Don't just all of a sudden pull the curtain open and all of a sudden there's tigers and lions. No, tell me, hey, we're going into a room with tigers and lions, but they're tamed and they're trained and this X, Y, and Z, don't worry, and you'll be sitting over here and this blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, okay, I'm cool. So if you're there to sell them a pen, and you dare to sell them a thousand pens for their office in Bay Point. Say, sir, I'm here to sell you a thousand pens for your office at Bay Point. And now they're comfortable. But if you come in, and obviously I'm making this very simplistic, and I'm just kind of answering Kwasi's question here about, you know, can I do this? You know, can I make videos of this nature? 
But if you come in and you start talking about, well, we are Acme Pen Company and we're a family owned and we've been in the business for 60 years and we have 10,000 employees. The guy's like, oh my God, what does he want? You know, what do you want from me? What do you want from me? All right. What's all this crap about your company and all this stuff and blah, 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 blah. blah. Just come out with it. I'm here to sell you 60,000 pens for your office in Bay Point. And then the guy's relaxed. Now he knows, he knows the lay of the land. He knows that this is the game where you try to sell him 60,000 pens for his office in Bay Point. And now he's actually comfortable. The BS about not telling them up front and talking about your company and its history and your family this and blah, 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 blah. That makes him very uncomfortable because he knows you're there to sell him some S. <laughs> right so why not just come up front with it so i can uh go ahead and i can uh give certain examples of that in that regard so let me go ahead and uh, say a couple of things more here and perhaps let me see if i can blow this up so that i can be a better reader of the live chat oh that's better and uh ladies and gentlemen again this is a test for our live stream which we'll be doing tomorrow the live stream on the pyramid the pyramid scheme the pyramid dashboard system for efficiency, right? For energy regulation, which is a very important thing because that's one of the things that uh, Winston Churchill said, someone asked him, you know, how do you get so many things done? And he, he answered, regulate your energy. Okay. And a lot of people don't, we just, we, we, we think that we don't live in the, on the physical plane or something like, you know, with every other system, like an engine that we were using as an analogy, you know that energy efficiency efficiency is important. And you know that there's a systems check with the most important thing first, and then you go up and when all other systems are checked and then you dump in the rocket fuel. A lot of, of us, what do we do? We go for the rocket fuel first, okay? We go for the rocket fuel first. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go take Adderall, okay? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go get a, another some kind of prescription or something. I'm gonna eat a snack. I'm going to uh, just, get another shot of espresso, right? I'm gonna distract myself with this, 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 that, and the other. Even music and other sources of inspiration, those are on the top of the pyramid, what I call the rocket fuel. And before you do those, before you do those, you, there's a system, there is a bottom of the pyramid. Notice I haven't mentioned the bottom of the pyramid or what this whole pyramid is made of. And if you see the thumbnail, You've already seen kind of what, what, what the basics are, but we'll be talking about it a little bit more uh, tomorrow. So <laughs> all of a sudden, Kevin Samuel pops out behind the curtain. <laughs> oh, snap, it's a lion. <laughs> uh, Neil St Stewart, you need that heavy. What do you need? What time will it broadcast? Eastern time tomorrow. Eastern time tomorrow will be three, 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 three. 3 o'clock p.m., noon. So figure this Sunday, it's going to be a lazy Sunday for some people. So hopefully, if you're in the West Coast, you will have rolled out of bed by noon, okay? You don't have any brunch and mimosa excuses because, you know, it's the corona, right? So you're going to be at home. So roll in for the West Coast people, it's at noon. And for the East Coast people, it'll be 3 p.m. Okay, so... I expect you guys to be there and we'll be talking about the pyramid system. Feel free to do a video about whatever you like here for the knowledge. Well, uh, thank you very much, <laughs> Mo Mo. <laughs> I like that name. I like that name. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I'm learning a lot from you guys as well. The switching of music is one little tidbit that I just kind of uh, thought about. And uh, sometimes I'm in the, sometimes it's, it's it's a reggae thing. I just need to be in the reggae, which is that heartbeat, heartbeat rhythm. It's just rhythm. So reggae is all about rhythm, okay? Okay, reggae is all about rhythm. It's just rhythm, rhythm, rhythm all the time, okay? And sometimes I need to get into some more classical. And by classical, I really mean uh, the romantic era, right? So Schubert and people like that, and then maybe Baroque with, Bach and those, right? So switching in that regard is also important. 
So going through here again <laughs> after the Bears game. East 3 p.m. Got it. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> Do I like dancehall reggae? As a matter of fact, yes, I do. Uh, I like dancehall reggae. Um, I like Damien Marley. Damien Marley is one of my biggest, uh, shall I say, inspirations in terms of the kind of music that I write. I like to write that kind of stuff, you know? So the the track that Kevin Samuel, Kevin Samuels plays, uh, or the one that he kind of put on his channel, uh, where he made a video with a derby girl skating around and put my music behind it, that's a dancehall track. So I like that kind of stuff. I like the many words, okay? I because I, I, first of all, I started making hip hop. I started writing hip hop, and um, so I'm into the wit, the rhyming, the rhythm. More of a rhythm guy than the melody guy, right? So, and then the wit and the rhythm and the many words and the intricacies of the intertwining. And you got to be clever to write good hip hop or good dance hall, right? So that's generally what I prefer. Uh, I, I, and then I push myself to write more melodic things um, and you just push myself to calm down and sing out the words and not get bored and not try to fit in so many words in there. Because I was a big fan of Bone Thugs and Harmony coming up. And I, I think they influenced me, uh, definitely influenced me a lot. And I was a fan because I like that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, Vibe Star, oh, of course. Are we, I kill we, nobody else. If I know you, boss, they gonna somebody else. Vibes Cartel, of course, of course, of course. Definitely Vibes Cartel. But um, Damien Marley, I find to be one of the most prolific. Yeah, Bone Thugs for sure. I toi in the house. Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the third of the month. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be wrapping this up fairly quickly here. But basically, this is a test live stream for the main live stream, which we'll be doing tomorrow. I'll leave the video up as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and the live stream tomorrow, we're going to be talking about the pyramid. Okay. The pyramid systems check. It is a way of checking the systems for efficiency. What is implied in this video what is implied in tomorrow's live stream is that you know, you already know that you need to be put in 12 to 16 hour days every day. This is not a place to get convinced of that. Okay? No, you already know that. And then number two, you have already cut out time wasting activities and people out of your life. Okay? So you're not watching Game of Thrones and the rerun of Breaking Bad and you're up on all the streams of uh, on, on Hulu and uh, HBO and everything. And no, 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 no. You have already cut all that crap out and you're not the hanging out type of person, always hanging out over there at the bar with your buddies, farting and scratching your ass. <laughs> no, you've already cut those things out. So one, you already know you got to put in the time. Two, you have already created the time. You have the 16 hours staring at you. And now how do you become the most efficient during that time? In other words, you're running this engine. What's the systems check? What's the dashboard? What are the gauges on the dashboard? What are the parameters? And what goes first? That's why it's a pyramid. The bottom is what you check first. And then you go up from there before you get to the top, which is the rocket fuel which I call crutches, before you get to crutches, okay, you want to make sure that you're checking the systems, the basics, the basics. And we use the engine analogy. You want to check the heating system. You want to check the cooling system. You want to check the lubricating system. You want to check for fuel efficiency, optimal speed relative to wind resistance, so on and so forth, okay? Before you say, you know what? All those things are working, but I need a little bit of extra boost, so I'm going to get the NOS, the nitrogen boost engine crazy whatever thing and put it in there, rocket fuel and go. What happens if you start from the top all the time? What happens when you start with the inspiration and the coffee and the rocket fuel all the time? Number one, you're ignoring, <laughs> and you guys got me going now. I'm supposed to be a, it was supposed to be a short test. <laughs> supposed to be a short test. Um, but what happens when you start from the top? When you start from the top, number one, you're ignoring the basics. You're ignoring the foundation of the building, okay? You don't just 
ignore the heating system, your car is overheating and you don't even check the overheating or the fuel filter, the oil filter, and so on and so forth, you just go ahead and dump rocket fuel in it. No. So that's number one is that you're ignoring the basics, right? And you're not fixing what you need to fix. But number two, the rocket fuel is hard on your system. Okay. The rocket fuel is hard on your system. And what does that mean? That means that you're going to be getting, especially for biological systems, diminishing returns, less and less and less and less of an effect. This is true for all drugs. You don't just have to be snorting cocaine or something. It's true for coffee and it's true for all other kinds of things with which you get that dopamine kick, even music, or I don't know, Tony Robbins that you like to put in the background to give you that extra boost, right? You get diminishing returns with biological systems. That's just how it works, okay? So two detrimental effects from starting at the top, which is what we're general. I'm putting myself in this category, left to our devices, we don't start from the base. And I'll introduce the whole pyramid tomorrow. We don't start from the base, we start at the top. And this, number one, we're ignoring the base, we're ignoring the basic systems. And then, number two, we get diminishing returns. We need more and more and more and more and more in order to get the same effect. And we're just destroying ourselves. We're destroying the engine, okay? We're destroying the engine. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Donnie Breeze. Looking forward to it, Donnie Breeze says. Keep <laughs> keep going, man. I appreciate the knowledge, dude. See y'all tomorrow at three. Got to go, got to go, got to go. Candyman is out. Peace out, Candyman says Black Curtis. Let me see if I can read a little bit more of the chats here. And uh, love Bone Thugs. Any places of travel coming up? Any places of travel? Any places of travel? Well, my next stop will be, I'll be going over to Portland uh, very soon. I, I have a I have a brother over there. Well, not a biological brother. There's a guy over there that I would like to interview. Um, he's a guy making moves. Um, and by the way, Itwa is in the chat. That's the high value man I had an interview with. He's the president of American Heritage University. Shout out, shout out to Itwa. Uh, also, he's uh, the man behind New Game, New Game Productions, okay? So I'm going up to Portland to interview another person. And uh, he is, uh, he, wor he, he works at Apple, okay? Uh, apparently there, there are some things he cannot say. Uh, he, he, he cannot, uh, you know, Apple has a lot of, uh, uh, what, what is the term? It totally escapes me now. Uh, the clause, the clause with, you know, that binds you, that, you know, that, that just call it a gag clause. <laughs> Um, and then you can't say certain things and so on and so forth, but I'll, I'll be, I'll be generally speaking, I'm always going up and down the West coast, Seattle, Portland, and then the Bay area. And then also to Los Angeles, I'll be going again to Los Angeles. I was, uh, down in Los Angeles and I met with solo TV 84 about three weeks ago, but now I will well, actually two weeks ago, uh, but I'll be going again in another couple of weeks. I'm going to be doing a live stream for the band. Okay live stream for the band. Um, and also, you know, we're doing rehearsals for the new music and so on and so forth, and then recording a new album as well. And that'll be coming out, okay? Non-disclosure agreements. Thank you very much, the unspecialist. <laughs> exactly. The NDAs, the NDAs, the non-disclosure non -disclosure agreement. So he might not be able to talk a lot about, you know, what he does exactly for Apple, but I'm sure I'll be able to get uh, a couple of things out of him regarding how he's been able to move to where he is at in life, how he thinks about his particular role, right? The journey that he has taken and how he has changed the mistakes he has made, what he has learned from them so that we can all learn, right? So we can all learn from those mistakes. To protect proprietary info and process, Apple employees cannot cannot say. <laughs> they cannot say, unfortunately. Yeah. I believe some people have genetic advantages when it comes to sleep, aka Elon Musk. <laughs> like, <laughs> Neil Stewart. Well, what do you know about my sleep patterns? That's funny. <laughs> 
sleep is very important. And by the way, the, in the bottom of the pyramid, you know, I have the body. The body's at the bottom of the pyramid. Speaking of the body, that's hydration, rest, and exercise. And, uh, and exercise really has to do with the state of the muscles and the hormonal systems and so on and so forth. And uh, we're going to be talking practically about how you check those. And that is at the bottom of the pyramid. The bottom of the pyramid. The very, very bottom of the pyramid, by the way, is hydration. You know what you are, right? You've heard it a thousand times, the cliche, the bromide. But still, most people are dehydrated. It's mind boggling to me. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not going to get in my, I'm not going to chastise anybody. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> but basically, hey, King, King, rolling through, rolling through here on the test. Hello. Hello, 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 hello to the chat, the family. Exactly. Neil, we know we're 75% water, but we do stupid things. We, we, we drink Coca-Cola and chocolate milk and, and oh my God, you know? And we think we're hungry when we're not. We're just thirsty. The signals that you get from the brain when you're thirsty and when you're hungry are the same. You cannot tell the difference. But if you're living in North America, trust me, you're not hungry. If you're living in North America, you probably don't even know what hunger feels like. One hundred percent. You probably don't even really know what hunger feels like. So stop it. Stop it. Next time you think, oh, I need a snack. No, stop it. Don't get a snack. Get some water. It's the base of the pyramid. It also regulates your mood and your energy. You're 75% water for crying out loud. Okay? You know? And again, there are three premises here. Number one, you know you got to be putting the hours. It's not a place to, to be convinced that you need to be putting the hours. You already know that. Number two, you've cut out time-wasting activities Okay, you've cut out all the time wasting activities from your life. Number three, you have the hours in front of you, and now you want to learn how to be efficient. Okay, so I have a systems check. The bottom of the pyramid is water. If and whenever you hit a wall, ask yourself, Am I hydrated? Chances are you're not hydrated. Okay. We'll be going in depth about this tomorrow. And again, a lot of the stuff that I'm saying here bears repeating a thousand times. So I'm not going to be, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of saying it today and then saying it again tomorrow. It bears repeating a thousand times. And all the different aspects of the pyramid are things that I've already touched upon in my videos. And I will continue to touch upon because there are a thousand different aspects and a thousand different little schemes and techniques to use when it comes to mastery of subjective consciousness. OK, there are a thousand ways to go about it. But basically, the bottom of the pyramid is water. You are dehydrated most of the time. Most people are dehydrated. It's just that's just what it is. If you don't have a systematic, practical approach to being hydrated, then you're dehydrated. It's as simple as that. If you are not actively checking and monitoring how hydrated you are, in other words, first thing you do when you wake up is to down two glasses of water and then fill up another one and take it to where you're going and then keep drinking until you pee twice and your pee is clear. And then now that's your base level. And you make sure that you keep on drinking water and that each time you urinate throughout the day, it is clear. If it is not clear, the bottom of your pyramid is off. How can you expect to be effective in this world when you're dehydrated? Okay, and this is not... This is not woo, nor is it uh, something just to do just because. I'm telling you, okay, if you want to compete at the highest levels, you cannot expect to be doing it with an engine that's overheating. Come on. <laughs> Shout out to Nicer. Shout out to Nicer. 
Shout out to Legend of Salmonia. What did you miss? Well, basically, this is okay. This is a test of the live stream that we'll be doing tomorrow. This is my first live stream. So I wanted to come in here today. I want to check my ability to be able to read and be able to look at the camera. I want to see how things work. Okay. I got my I got my jacket on, but I got I got basketball shorts on today. Okay. So it's it's not the real live stream yet. Okay. Tomorrow I promise I'll have I'll have the full get up. I'll be ready to go, even though you don't see down there, but it's gotta be, it's gotta be on point, right? It's gotta be on point. Okay. So I'm talking about the introduction of my pyramid method of a systems check. Okay, the systems check is basically a dashboard with which you check your energy for your engine for efficiency. Okay, I'm a very practical person. If you watch my channel, you know that it's all about practical things. Even when I talk about principles, like you know, being kind to your future self, which is a principle, I put it in a way where there's an analogy, there's a story, and you can make it actionable because there's a visceral feeling that you get. You can understand it and you can put it into action. Okay, because the principle of not procrastinating, haha, <laughs> everybody knows. What's the point of me telling you not to procrastinate? So if I put it in a way that says, hey, be kind to your future self, and then I have a story behind it, and I have analogies behind it, and then you can see how you can measure it, and you can see the results that you get from it, that's what I'm all about, okay? So I'm going to give you a practical system that I use myself, which is the pyramid. The bottom of the pyramid is the first thing you check, and then you go up through the pyramid before you get to the top. And my claim is that a lot of us invert the pyramid and we go to the top first. The top is what I call crutches. Crutches are coffee, inspiration, music, those kinds of things. Those kinds of dopamine, dopamine triggers. You don't want to go there first. You want to start at the bottom of the pyramid. And I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. I had to talk about the bottom of the pyramid, which is hydration. Okay. And again, being the kind of practical person I am, I'm not just here saying hydrate just because, you know, it's it's great for your chakras or whatever the hell. No, I'm saying, look, if you want to compete at the highest levels, okay, you cannot be dehydrated because I'm going to come in there and I'm going to be hydrated. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to get the deal. I'm going to win. I'm going to be 16 hours efficient. You're not going to be. Simple. <laughs> yeah, Legend of Simonia. Brother Ike, you sound like a herbalist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, Neil. It's not about theory. It's not about theory. It's not about theory. It's about practical things. Okay? I've spent at least a decade and a half just being the kind of person that does a lot of things. I spent a decade and a half being that guy that people always ask, how do you get so much done? I've spent over a decade and a half meditating, also being the kind of person that keeps track of what works and what doesn't work up in my head. And also time and time again, I write it down, okay? I have this book that I write, which may never be published, right? But it's mainly for me. I'm a lifelong student, okay, which kind of makes you a teacher because teacher and student, the same or flip sides of, of the coin. So these videos that I'm making or any kind of dissemination of information is a part of my learning process because until you can distill things down, and everybody knows this is a cliche, right? Until you can distill things down and communicate it effectively, you don't really know it, right? So... I like for things to be practical. I'm not just going to come here and tell you to zen out. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, be the most comfortable person in the room. And here's how you do it. Okay. And how you do it are meditation techniques. But I'm not going to tell you it's a meditation technique because that's not a very practical road to go down. That's a feel good kind of a thing. You know, and you've heard it a thousand times. I'm going to say, if you go in here and you do these things, you're going to be the most comfortable person in the room. Thereby, you're going to make other people comfortable and you're going to increase your chances of closing the deal. So when I tell you to hydrate, even though you know you're 75% water and all those other cliche things, I'm telling you that the people who are at the top of their game know these things and are doing these things and you cannot expect to compete with them. You cannot expect to come near them if you're not hydrated. Okay? It's practical. 
okay? I'm not your doctor. I'm not telling you because it's good for you. Well, I'm saying not just because it's good for you. Obviously, it's good for you. But because it is practical, and I know that I know what it takes to compete at the highest levels, and you cannot have a car without coolant, without proper lubrication, and you're trying to go into the derby, you're trying to do the Formula One or whatever. No, you, you're going to lose. So a lot of times when it comes to our body, our physical system, we act like, you know, we're, we're living on this ethereal plane where, you know, where hydration doesn't matter when you're 75% water, where overheating doesn't matter, where you can't have a system, a dashboard where you check the basics before you go to the top. You have to do these things. And then today I was just introducing one of the things in the pyramid. I'm not going to talk about where it is in the pyramid, but it's called task switching, which we know, which is something you have to do when you hit the wall. You switch tasks. Don't go take a nap. And as I said, if you're in North America, you don't need a snack. If you're in North America, you don't even know what hunger feels like. So you're never hungry. Okay? Now, the people who are at the top of their game and they know what they're eating and they're measuring the calories, that's not for you. I'm not talking about you because you probably know when you're hungry. I'm talking about the regular person, myself and you. You're not hungry. You're never hungry in this place. So stop it. Okay? You're never, you never need a snack. It's not what's going on. You need hydration. You've heard it a thousand times. The body, the brain cannot differentiate between dehydration and hunger. You feel hungry, you feel like you need a snack, go drink water, okay? You're not in the desert in Somalia in 1992, okay? You're not hungry. You need water. Hydration is the bottom of the pyramid. There's a way of checking your hydration. If you don't have a systematic way of being hydrated, then you're dehydrated. It's that simple, right? It's the bottom of the pyramid, and it's the most important thing. I always say I worship I worship at the church of hydration, okay? This is the most important thing to me. When I wake up, even when I'm sleeping at night, if I happen to wake up in the middle of the night, I always have this thing by, by me, by the way, wherever I go. And I always refill it, constantly refilling it, okay? I'm always checking my hydration level. There are ways to check it. The more you hydrate, the more systematic you get with it, the more you'll be able to know because your body tells you everything. You just have to look. I mentioned the color of your urine. That's a very simple external one, but internally there are ways of knowing as well. Another one is the suppleness of your lips. Even if they're not dry, okay, there is a way your lips actually feel. They feel differently when you're hydrated versus when you're not. And until you start getting in the systematic habit of being hydrated all the time, you're not even gonna know what that means, but you need to start getting into a systematic habit of hydrating. Before you do anything, that's the bottom of the pyramid, you're 75% water, hydrate, okay? And then you get to the next and 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 the next. You get to the top of the pyramid, okay? And it's midnight and you got a deadline tomorrow and everything is, you've been doing everything right, but you, you're, you're, you're crashing, you, you can't go there. That's when you bring out the rocket fuel. Okay, that's when you bring out the Red Bull, <laughs> right? Shout out to Kevin Samuels, okay? Because, you know, Kevin Samuels has worked a full day, and then he comes and he does his stream uh, at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, right? Most probably why he, he needs that Red Bull, because, hey, it's, uh, th this, is the, this is the rocket fuel at the top of the pyramid when you need that last boost, okay? But there are other ways of doing it. There are other ways of pulling out that rocket fuel, and that has to do with inspiration, okay? There's this drill surgeon guy that I like to listen to, and probably like once every three months, I get to that point where it's like, man, I really need to, and it's usually late at night when I'm pulling like an all-nighter. When I'm pulling an all-nighter, then I turn on that guy, and he tells me to kill my inner bitch, and you know, that uh, you're being a bitch ass right now, Ike. <laughs> Different strokes for different folks, okay? I get inspiration by from that kind of thing. I like the hardcore drill sergeant type of stuff, okay? That's the top of the pyramid. I'm not just gonna go there before I check all the other systems. All Everything has to be checked first. Everything has to be check, 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 check. Hydrated, yes. 
well exercised, yes, right? Well rested, yes. And then you go to the next one. The next level up is awareness. And I'm talking about subjective consciousness and those other kinds of things. We can elaborate upon it tomorrow, okay? And the next one is tactics, which include this task switching that I mentioned. You switch your tasks, you switch your position, you go from your sitting desk to your standing desk. You go from your screens to paper and pencil. You go from sitting to standing, okay? So you change tasks, you change mediums, the, me the media with which you are doing the tasks, and also you change your position, sitting versus standing, and also change the scenery. Get in your car back in the day where you could still go to Starbucks or go to the library or I go to my downstairs office or work in the kitchen or something, something like that. That also helps. And then at the very top of the pyramid is what we're calling the crutches. That's your rocket fuel. That's your music, inspiration, coffee, those kinds of things. What do we do typically? We start at the top. When you start at the top, you're ignoring the base and you're killing your engine because you get diminishing returns from those things at the top. And you need more and more and more in order to get the same effect. And that's backwards. And these things are practical, okay? Again, I've the, I'm the guy that has spent over a decade and a half people asking me, how do you get so much stuff done? And this is how it's done. There is no secret to it. And it's simpler than people think. It, the knowledge is out there, okay? You know you're 75% water, okay? People have been telling you to hydrate forever, but no, you like chocolate milk. You know, you like Coca-Cola. Or, you know, you, you're just too lazy to do it. Or you don't like the taste of water. You know, you should get smacked for saying that, honestly. Who? <laughs> Who's the drill sergeant? <laughs> He's, uh, let me see. Hydrophobic. Other people are hydrophobic. <laughs> oh, you can't help the fact that you're 75% water, whether you like it or not. Um, so I like to listen to Dan Pena. I like to hear him cuss me out when, again, once about two or three months, I'm pulling the all-nighter. Everything is already done. I'm well hydrated, well rested, blah, blah, blah. All those things are there. But I'm struggling to push through this last six hours of the night, okay? I pull out Dan, Dan Pena, and he cusses me out. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you need to wake up, and you, you need to do this. There is no, there's no bitching out, no excuse making, okay? You, you're, you're being a little wimp right now. As Joe Rogan will say, kill your inner bitch, right? That's when I put, that's, again, that's the top, that's the top of the pyramid. That's the little thing you want to sprinkle on top once in a while when you need it. But otherwise, your basic routine should start at the bottom of the pyramid, and then you go from there, right? Water temperature be a major factor in your opinion. That's very interesting regarding the temperature of the water. Okay. Regarding hydration, let me start first by saying this. Hydration is not something you can rush. So especially if you, you, you don't have a system yet. Okay. And again, I'm going to repeat this within the context of the pyramid tomorrow. But unless, especially if you don't have a system yet for doing this, you want to know that it takes about two hours to hydrate. So imagine a potted plant, a potted plant. It's filled with water. Okay. No, sorry. A potter plant is filled with soil, okay? It's filled to the brim with soil, and it could probably take a full gallon of water. But if you just dump the full gallon of water, it'll overflow and spill out the sides because it hasn't had the time to percolate through and be absorbed. Simple, right? Simple, right? And depending on the kind of soil that it is, with clay, for example, you need to put it really slowly. But let's just say it's a relatively granular soil. So what you do is you put a quarter gallon first, and then you wait, let it percolate. And then you put another quarter gallon, and you wait. Same thing with your body, okay? So it's not, ooh, I'm dehydrated. Here's a cup of water. Well, now I'm hydrated. No, that's not how it works, okay? You can drink that cup of water, and you're going to fill it up again, and you're going to take it, and you're going to sit at your desk. And you're going to sip, 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 
And then you're going to go and fill it up again, come back to your desk. You're going to do this for about two hours and you're going to go to the restroom about twice. The first time your urine is not going to be where it should be. And you're going to do this until your urine is clear. When your urine is clear, then you keep on filling the cups of water and maintaining and making sure that it's clear all through the day. The moment it's not clear, you're in trouble. Now, if you're taking vitamins or vitamins which have color, which put color in your urine and so on and so forth, you can keep track of that as well. You know, in other words, you need to get into a systematic approach with this. And it is the bottom of the pyramid. In other words, if you're alive and you're breathing and you're not doing this, come on, right? <laughs> oh, David Goggins. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, woof. that's a given for sure, right? I just, <laughs> I, I saw him uh, the other day on Instagram and he was running and he said, um, this is a very good idea, by the way. He said, record the voice, that inner voice. Yeah, shout out to Doug. If we talk about David Goggins, for sure. I, I, I listened to him as well. And uh, shout out to uh, David Goggins. He said, when you have the voice in your head that is telling you all the negative things about why you need more rest on and so forth, he said, Pick up your phone, hit up the uh, the recording app, and start recording it. Just record what the voice is telling you, okay? And then listen to it later and, and hear how much of a bitch ass you sound like, right? I really liked that one. Yeah, that one, that one, uh, that one resonated with me. But again, the things that we're talking about here are premised upon the fact that you know that you need to put in the hours, the long hours. This is a cliche. You've heard it a thousand times. You're not, this is not where you come to hear that. This is not where you hear come to be convinced that it is necessary. No. Okay. That's a given. Number two, you've already cut out all the time wasting activities. You're not out there watching Game of Thrones reruns and all that other nonsense and excessive, excessive, excessive social media consumption and so on and so forth. You cut out time-wasting activities and people and crap from your life. And then number three, you actually have something that you're doing and you have the 16 hours in front of you, okay? Now, how do you become more efficient? In a systematic way, what is the systems checklist? What is the dashboard? What are the gauges on the dashboard that you check systematically every day, every day, okay? The more you do this, the more you'll gain concentration, equanimity, and sensory clarity. These things are very important, okay? And there's not enough time in the world to go over all that this stuff entails because people go to monasteries and spend a lifetime of meditation work, sitting for hours a day doing Zen stuff in order to master their body and their mind. So it's not like this is exhaustive, but it's very practical. OK, it's very practical. And the more and more we talk about it, the more and more you can be able to connect to the dots of how this whole thing works. Right. That it's all related, whether you talk about meditation or exercise or this kind of discipline or nutrition or hydration. Right. They all work together. They all go hand in hand that's a good one recording when you catch yourself being doubtful exactly exactly I, I i definitely like that one from mr david goggins and uh i actually did it that day okay so i i, I you know we all have the voice recording app on our phones i just recorded myself like oh here's what you here, here are the excuses i'm giving myself right now i recorded it and um then you can go back and listen to it so Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Please, 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 please come back tomorrow. And we're going to formally introduce the pyramid system where I'm going to go in a systematic way. What starts at the bottom of the pyramid, which I already mentioned, which is hydration. Okay. Please, okay. Please get in a systematic, get a systematic program for hydrating. Okay. And cut off the BS. Cut off the diuretics. Okay. And you know when you take a diuretic, diuretics, which are things like coffee and alcohol and so on and so forth. You are actively draining yourself of water, so you need to put in more water, okay? It's not, so when you're drinking beer and you're going to the restroom, you're not peeing out the water in the beer. You're peeing out all the water in your system because diuretics actively pull water out of your system, 
biology 101, simple stuff, okay? So watch the BS, okay? It takes a lot of water to digest food, okay? Depending on whether it's protein or carbohydrate, about four to one by volume, okay? Depending on the kind of density you're looking at, whatever, right? But let's just say four to one, three to four to one, okay? So you take one unit of protein, you need four units of water just to digest it. So that takes away from your water supply. So you need that four units of water just to digest the protein, and then you need to re-up on the water. And also, it's not something that you can just dump. We use the soil analogy. You can't just dump water on soil. You have to go in a systematic way in terms of put a little bit, let it percolate, put a little bit, let it percolate. That's how you stay hydrated. You don't just hydrate and it's done. No, you got to stay hydrated, constantly putting it in, right? So tomorrow we're going to go through the systems checklist for a very practical reason because there's going to be times when time and time again, you're going to be like, what's wrong? Like, just not very efficient today. I can't seem to pull through. So, right, if it's an engine, there's a systems checklist, right? Whether it's a rocket launch or your car or whatever. So what do you do for yourself, right? Rather than go to the top of the pyramid, which is the crutches and dump rocket fuel on yourself or think, oh, I just need a snack. I need this power bar, I need coffee or whatever. No, stop, there is a system. And at the base of the pyramid is the most important thing. Starts with hydration. And then there are other body elements such as rest and then the state of your general hormonal system and your muscles and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, all this stuff gets better and better the more you do meditation. Okay. Mastery of subjective consciousness, which will be other videos, which I'll talk about how to pay attention to things. I already talked, about, for example, about using your ears as an access point. I also talked about using your hands as an access point. I talked about using the external environment in my video about being the most comfortable person in the room, okay? But what you want, how can you actually gauge the system, the dashboard? You need concentration and you need sensory clarity. Sensory clarity is the ability to discriminate between the different aspects of your body. What's the image in your head? What's the talk in your head? What's the feeling in the body? Where is the feeling in the body? Is it an emotion? Is it an external perception? Is it an internal perception? Is it changing? Is it numbness? Where is it, okay? You need these kinds of things which require concentration, okay? And these things also require equanimity. These are the three things you're getting from any kind of meditative practice, which I call mastery of subjective consciousness, okay? Sensory clarity, concentration, and equanimity, okay? So we're talking about practical things about a dashboard to check, hydration, so on and so forth, okay? So you gotta become familiar with your organism, with your system, and this is what meditation does for you. So these things go hand in hand, okay? Well, ladies and gentlemen, work 18 hour shifts, need lots of water. Thank you very much. And you, oh yes, you talked about the temperature of the water. Generally speaking, I like room temperature water, okay, for just the normal day-to-day -day activities, okay? Now, if I'm gonna go into the sauna, which is something I also do, then I take ice water with me. I tend to overheat. And I don't know if it's an aesthetic thing in terms of maybe ice water doesn't cool me down because I've heard that before that, you know, it doesn't really cool you down. Or maybe so it's an aesthetic thing if it's a, a placebo effect, but I tend to down a whole thing of ice water and then I take more ice in there with me and I continue to drink ice water um, while, you know, blasting that heat in the sauna. But generally speaking, I just do uh, room temperature water. I also tend to do sparkling water from time to time, depending on what I'm doing with my diet, because that helps to push the gases out of the system, right? And it's another way with which I check what's going on in the, in the gastrointestinal tract, right? Again, you want to know thyself, right? Know thyself. People like to make these things a philosophical idea. Oh, know thyself. It's like, well, come on, Okay. You need to know yourself in the sense of how hydrated are you? What's the color of your urine? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. That's what knowing yourself is. Okay. If you don't know that, then you're just wasting your time. And again, this is very practical because I'm telling you the people at the highest levels do this stuff. And if you want to compete in any arena and want to be the best version of yourself, you cannot be doing this with an engine that's overheating, that doesn't have new spark plugs, that, um, has old oil in it, no oil filter, no air filter, no coolant, but you wanna go race in the derby? 
It's not the Derby. That's horses. <laughs> some kind of rally, some kind of Formula One thing. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. And again, as I said, I've spent a decade and a half to over two decades doing a lot of things with people around me asking me, how do you get a lot of things done? So point is, I know that the demand is out there, right? I know that people are wondering, how do I do things? And I know that the information, just pure information is out there, but people cannot take it into digestible, practical, visceral, intuitive chunks to do stuff with. And over the years, I have done stuff, practice meditation, do the hydration thing, do the workout thing, so on and so forth. And I have this system for mastery of subjective consciousness, which makes it sound like I'm on some other level. No, I'm just a human being, uh, just uh, waking up every day and having to rehydrate and having to start from the bottom like everybody else. But I think that I can put things in a very practical way because I'm a very practical person. I don't like woo-woo. I don't like fluff. Okay. I, I want the real deal, right? So I know that the demand is out there. And I know that, hey, you know what? I'm going to stop with the self, uh, you know, the false modesty and just come out and say, well, these are the things that, that, that I do and that they are confirmable because I'm not saying anything new, right? But that it actually is important. So you already knew you were 75% water, but no one has actually come and told you that, hey, if you want to be good at your job, you need to be hydrated. That is the bottom of the pyramid. Forget all the other things and the training. And it's like, no, if you're not hydrated, you're never going to make it to the top. And somebody might come out and say, well, but I know this guy who ate steak in this every night and he was a fat slob. And But he's like, whatever. Okay, go ahead. Do that. Okay. Do that. So. I will be seeing you guys tomorrow. This is the first live stream. Dr. Thunder, good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Tomorrow we'll be just introducing again. There'll be a lot of rehash of some of the topics that we talked about today, but I'm gonna be doing it in a more formal way, starting from the bottom, the base of the pyramid and working the way up. Again, there are three things that are presumed in this. There are three givens, there are three basic premises baked into the pie, which is that you know that it takes a lot of time to do the work. You know you need those 12 to 16 hour days every day, right? And then number two, you've cut out the time wasting activities and time wasting people. If I say time wasting people, that makes it sound a little antisocial and stuff. But you know, we're adults here, you know what I mean. You've cut out the time wasting activities and the time wasting people from your life. And you actually do have something to pursue within that the, the 16 hour period that you're trying to do now. How do you have a formal system for checking whenever you hit a roadblock, right? Or when you immediately when you wake up in the morning, systems check, 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 and then constantly checking it so that your efficiency is peak. As we used the engine analogy, planes, trains, and automobiles, right? We said, hey, there is a heating system and a cooling system. There's a lubricating system that makes sure that you're not losing a lot of energy to friction and heat loss, right? There is the checking of the optimal speed relative to wind resistance to make sure that you're getting maximum fuel efficiency. Well, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, we are all so physical systems, okay? <laughs> Surprise, right? And we need to approach ourselves the same way. And if you're trying to compete at the high levels, at least relative to your particular capacities, okay, which I said is baked into the pie in this, you are trying to be the best version of yourself, then you also take into account the premise that you are a physical person living in the physical plane, okay? Then you need a systems check for yourself as well. And that's why I'm calling the pyramid, <laughs> the pyramid scheme. And we'll be talking about that tomorrow. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm going to be ending the live stream right now. I'll see you guys noon Pacific time, noon Pacific time, 3 p.m.
p.m. in the East Coast. Okay, 3 p.m. in the East Coast. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go over to the keyboard over there. I got this song that I'm working on. I'm gonna go ahead and uh and try it, try it out, see if it uh see if it works. Okay, because right now, speaking of task switching, I'm kind of done with screens. Okay, I have some work to do with the screen later. Okay, but right now, I'm just like ah, I'm done with screens. So I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna turn on the light over there on the keyboard area. I'm gonna play around with this uh, little melody that I'm working with, see how it goes, and uh, peace out. Thank you very much. <laughs> 